grace and peace be unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. What a blessing it is when we get to worship together wherever and however we are because God is present with us. May we be aware that God's Spirit surrounds us as we sing together our opening song, Holy Ground. to God. If you will then join your voices as we pray collectively our call to worship. Lord, Lord we, we hear your call to remember, remember that, that you are with us always, always until, until the end of the age, wherever and however we are. 
The Holy Spirit is in our midst now and always. God the Creator is creating something new now and always. We are all created in God's image of love. We are always loved, always forgiven, always known to God and cannot be forgotten. Know this and share the good news. Let us worship with all that we are, wherever and however we are. Amen. And let us join our voices as we sing all hail the power of Jesus' name.
with the message, with the hope, with the grace, with the peace, with the name and love and heart of Jesus Christ, because it is in God that we find that all will be well. It is in God that we are knitted together into a new fabric of creation where there is no Jew nor Greek, no black, no white. We are one in God's spirit. And so may we find that rejoicing spirit as we come before our God in worship, not only here, not only wherever you are, but in every day of your life. May we be made into a new creation in and through God's image. And that new creation will remind us of how we should be as God's people. Let us go before our God in prayer knowing the hearts, the desires, the wounds, the difficulties, and the feelings that need to take place. Let us pray. Lord, our God, we place our very lives before you. We know that every single one of us is different. Every single one of us is made unique. And yet we hear the confidence of faith that comes through your living word, the scripture made lie that says we were created in your image and it is good. May we boldly approach your throne today and shed off whatever difficulties we have, shed off whatever imprisonment we feel, shed off whatever desires that separate us, shed off whatever sins hold us down, shed off whatever burdens Whatever bonds, whatever afflictions are out of our own making, but also of the making of those who try to hold us back. There is an empowerment that comes through the gift of the Holy Spirit when we ourselves can proclaim mightily on our own behalf here. I am. Use me. Here I am. Make me yours, O oh God. This is a day meant for new beginnings that we might see those around us with new eyes. Because every single one of us should have the eye-opening experience of knowing that we are not on this earthly journey alone. But if we use the eyes of holiness that we can see in the eyes of those beside us, in front of us, behind us, those that don't look anything like us, but if we use the eyes of grace that you give us, we all of a sudden can see a new creation in your image. Too much, too far, too long. We have neglected to find a new hope of what it is that you're asking from us. And that is that we walk in your footsteps. How we will live is set by the footsteps that dwell among us in the path that Jesus led. May we have the faithfulness to know that when Jesus asks us to walk his road. So great a cloud of witnesses will surround us. Mother 
mothers and fathers of our faith. Brothers and sisters of our faith. Parents and children of our faith. Your promise was that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And how dare we think for a second that you have. Because you never have. You are right here among us. And so amidst our own earthly toil, pain, and journey, we hear you beckoning to us. Sinner, come home. And when we hear, sinner, come home, you also challenge us to lay down the burdens that are right there holding us back. And so may we be made anew today. Lord, hear our cry as we pray with new vision, new heart, and new spirit. The words that you taught us to our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. At this time, as we join our voices together, we give thanks for the gifts that continue to come to support the ongoing ministries of our community. Let us join our voices together as we sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below.
Covey, would you come forward and help me by representing the children of our community? Before you sit down, I want you to walk up here with me. What do you see around that shepherd's staff and cross? What shape is that? We'll start there. What shape is that? It's a circle. Now we can go back down to it. So it's a circle. Now, as we talk about circles, I wonder, where is the beginning of a circle? Where does a circle begin? You're not sure. So, if we know where, where does a circle end? We don't know where it, begins. where it begins. So we're not really sure where a circle begins, and we're not really sure where a circle ends, because it never really does, does it? A circle just goes round and round and round and round, and there's no real place that we can point to and say, well, a circle starts here and it ends here. That's the way it is with God's love. We can't point to God's love and say it begins here and it ends here. It circles all around us all the time. Now, I want you to do a little bit of thinking. Can you put your thinking cap on? Right? Thinking cap on. Um, you and I, we were walking the other day when we went to go ground some worms, okay? And you found a leaf. <laughs> and you pulled it up. You remember the clover leaf you pulled up? And it was ginormous, wasn't it? Yeah, it was ginormous. How many leaves did that clover leaf have? Three. It had three Leaves. When we talk about God, we look at God as being the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three in one. And that shamrock or clover is a reminder for us, God's natural way of showing us that in one, there can also be three separate. So God is at one time the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Creator, the Savior, the Redeemer. The living presence that goes with us. It circles around us with no beginning and no end. That means wherever you are and however you are, are, God is always with you. Do you feel God with you? That was a big yawn. <laughs> Do you feel God with you? Yeah. Do you feel God with you when you're doing good things? Do you feel God with you when you're not doing good things? And that's the key to all of us, is feeling God's living presence with us wherever and however we are. Big, little, young, old, God is faithful if we remain faithful, we will see him, we will feel him, we will know him. God's love remains true to us. With no beginning and no end, just like that circle. Okay? How about we pray together this morning? God, we thank you for your loving presence among us. For the joy that you give to us. For your hope, your inspiration, your faith. That there is no beginning and no end with you. You just circle around us always. Thank you, Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. Don't forget your back. Our gospel reading for the day comes. From the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, 
verses 16 through 20. And I will be reading today from the New Revised Standard Version. Again, Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end. Of the age. May God add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the warming of all of our hearts as we come to full knowledge of what God has in store for us. From this, the word of God, for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As I have spent time reflecting on this gospel reading. It is one that has been part of my faith journey for a long time. Because this is the commissioning of the disciples. This is the very reflection that comes down that is passed in what we call the apostolic succession as we see the hands of Jesus placed on the initial apostles and those apostles' hands were placed on those that followed them on down through our apostolic family tree. And so when the yoke of faith, the yoke of my own apostolic succession was placed on my shoulders. The burden was there to look all the way back to the beginning. When Jesus' words were ever present and ever real, as he spoke up loud and clear and he said to those first apostles, all Authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And now I place the yoke on you. Go therefore into all the nations, all the world, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. But you know, we have to back up a little bit because it said when the 11 disciples came to Galilee and went to the mountain as Jesus had directed them, they saw him, they worshiped him, and some had their doubts. We Sometimes we're in that place in our own lives where seeing is believing. And we have to see the outcome before we truly believe that it's going to happen. We live in a day and age where we get overwhelmed with all kinds of products that have that label placed upon them that says, as seen on TV. Because we need to see it in order to believe it and all kinds of hokey sales pitches that occur. And that moment when 
we find ourselves with our phones, our smartphones that seemingly can listen to a conversation that you have and simply in hearing the conversation that you have, ads appear. If you talk about a certain kind of shoe, that shoe shows up. If you talk about a certain recipe, it shows up. Maybe we need to be mindful of what it is that we are saying because all kinds of ears are listening. Maybe that seeing is believing mindset that we are extra cautious about who might be listening in that format of what's on our smartphones and we're extra cautious about what it is that we say because someone might be listening. We never take that mindset, though, whenever it comes to perhaps the little ears that are around us. Maybe we never take that mindset whenever we realize that there are others who are around us who are affected by what it is that we say and what it is that we do. Those disciples, they saw him. And in seeing him, some believed. And it said they worshipped him. They worshipped him right there, right where they were. It wasn't in the confines of a temple. It wasn't in the padded pew seats of a sanctuary space. It was right there where they are. And they worshipped him. But you know, there's another group. It said, and some doubt. And yet our God never ceased to have faith in them. Right where we are, however and wherever we are, in the face of our own doubts, our God is bigger than any of us. And he takes all of those seeds of doubt that we might place before him. Sure, those moments where we see and believe, those moments where we get flooded with all kinds of messages pushing forward to us, you need to do this in order to show that you have enough faith. And yet there are some out there who still have that skeptic's soul, that doubting moment and yet out of skepticism and doubt dare I say that there is not a lack of faith because our God has more than enough faith in us when we don't have enough faith in ourselves Because it doesn't stop whenever Jesus recognized that when they saw him and some believed and they worshipped and some doubted. He didn't stop. He didn't hold up the works and say, ho, 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 hey, doubt, doubters, come here, come here. Let's revisit this. He did not stop there. In fact, what he said in a very profound way even to those who may have had their doubts. He reminds them, all power in both heaven and earth have been put upon me, and I'm now going to entrust you into the same call that's been put on your hearts. Go. Do. Make. And that call of making disciples and baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We often get caught up in this journey of understanding that that baptismal spirit only occurs in whatever form or fashion as that 
water is placed upon you. But I'm going to tell you from my own theological heart, from my own heart of belief, from my own faithful journey, that that spirit of baptism does not end when the sacramental journey of that process comes to a conclusion. Because just as I said in the children's sermon that a circle has no beginning and no ending, my belief is that God's faithfulness to our journey is the same. There is no beginning and no end. And the sacrament of baptism in and of itself is only a point on that circle. But the journey of baptism is lifelong. The journey of being circled around by those who are of faith is something that is a richer part of that blessing. Because the baptism in and of itself is just a, a point, as I said, on that path. And so the challenge that needs to be asked is how are we doing on our journey of being the face of Christ? Created in God the Father's image, living and real, as we listen to, are led by, and are pushed and pulled by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. How are we doing in being real to that Trinitarian understanding that God is with us? As ones who perhaps have been baptized, how are we living as baptized children of God? As ones who are maybe waiting for a deeper faith moment, a deeper faith journey for us to step forward and say, Okay, Lord, I, I'm ready now. I'm ready. For those infants that we have baptized in our own spiritual journey and presence, right here in the confines of where we worship today, how are we doing as parents, as grandparents, as sponsors, as godparents, as a congregation that has surrounded them through those spoken vows? How are we doing in saying, you are a beloved and blessed child of God, and I will give you, I will invest in you, I will pour into you out of my own heart. I will reflect daily on what it means for me to walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit and looking to the Creator to find the image of God in and through those around me. And now I'm supposed to invest that same Spirit into you. How am I doing? It's a moment for us to realize that just when we think that that call that Jesus puts out there is part of that apostolic succession of saying, you are given the power to do the baptisms. You're right. I'm the one as an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church. I have been empowered to be the one who can represent the hands of God pouring forth in God's spirit. But all of us, all of us are a part of that baptismal presence. Because, brothers and sisters, you and I are supposed to be representatives of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit everywhere we go. Because it says, go into all the world, go to all the nations, go to all the people. Do we stay faithful to that journey in our own souls everywhere we go? Let me put it in different terms. Do you act 
like a representative of Jesus Christ everywhere you are. Let me put it in different terms. When people see you, hear you, watch you, do they see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at work? Talk about powerful. Talk about holding our feet to accountability. Because there's much work for every single one of us. And you know, we've all gotten heated. We've all gotten caught up in the world's journey. We all have our moments where we either have faith in what's going on or we have doubts in what's going on. We all have all kinds of pointed conversations and direction and feelings and thoughts and emotions about what's happening with COVID and is this still real? Is this gone? What's, what's, what's up with this? We have our same thoughts and feelings about the protests that occur and the looting and the difficulties and the turmoil and the pain and the hurt and the hatred. And the questions about whether too much is too much and too little is too little. And as God is my witness standing right here in this house of faith, I don't have any of the answers to any of those questions. But what I do know is that in the face of those who are hurting and in pain, those that are suffering of illness and disease, those that are suffering at the hands of oppression and racism and classism, sexism, every ism that you can put, what I do know is that God challenges you and God challenges me. That in the face of every bit of it, we were created in God's image to be faithful witnesses as representatives of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is no greater task for any of us than to prayerfully ask ourselves that daily question, is what I'm doing what God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit do? And if the answer is no, then perhaps our path needs to change. If we ask that question of ourselves, am I treating the person I'm looking at before me the way that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit would treat that person, then perhaps I need to not treat that person that way. If I myself am not being treated the way that God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit would treat me, then I need to not allow myself to be treated that way. There is much on this journey that we may not have all of the answers for. Them. 
And God knew that we wouldn't have all the answers. But God also knew that when we didn't have all the answers, when we are like those apostles that were mentioned at the very beginning of this gospel reading, that had their doubts, had their concerns, had their fears, God still empowered them and said, I am with you always. It's the very last words that Jesus speaks in this section of scripture. I am with you always to the end of the age. There's no limits put on that. I am with you always to the end of the age. I am with you whether you are part of the Bell family that's sitting in the sanctuary today. Or I am with you whether you are sitting in your living room or your kitchen or some of you I know are in your garage and some of you are maybe sitting around a campfire. Some of you are still in your jammies sitting in your bed, eating a bowl of cereal and watching. And yet, God is with you. God is with us. Always. When we miss the mark and we don't get it right, God is with us. When we hit a home run and it's out of the park, God is with us. When we're muddling along our way and we're confused and we don't have all the answers and we feel like we're lost, God is with us. Our God is challenging us. Just as he challenged the first disciples. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. For those that believe, I'm here. For those that doubt, I'm here. For those that are worshiping with their very breath, I'm here. For those that get lost and confused and forget I'm here, I'm here. In the face of viruses that overwhelm us, God is here. In the face of a nation that is in upheaval and uproar, God is here. And the most important challenge in all of this is that God needs to be here. God needs to be in your heart. So the challenge that we get left with today, to me, I feel is one of the biggest challenges that faces every single one of us. How are you doing at representing God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? How are you doing at living into that journey of faith when others see you? Do they see through you to God, the three in one? Our God is with you always to the end of the age. Now may we be with and for and about and by God in the same way. Always to the end of the age. May we pray together. God, we come before you. You are with us always. 
Now may we be with you always. So wherever and however we are, awaken us to the new image that you ask us to be born into. And may goodness and justice and righteousness and salvation pour down upon us with a newness of life, washing us clean. May we be baptized in our minds, in our hearts, refreshed, awaken that we are made to be yours and in doing so we live and walk and act in faithfulness set our feet on right paths so that we might walk with peace and justice, proclaiming to all the world that you made us in your image, and you love us no matter what. And all of If you will join with me, we will sing our final hymn, Freely Free. Thou forgave my sin in Jesus. Been born again in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, Freely, freely, you have believed, freely, freely give. When my name and because you. In Jesus' name I come to you to share his part as he told me to. He said freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name and because you believe, others will know that I In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we might continue to be blessed, to be a blessing, wherever and however we are. And so may God's grace, mercy, peace, hope, joy, and love pave the path ahead of us out of his forgiving spirit, his loving heart, and his creative power. He said free.